we just finished testing the 500th TV we've ever reviewed in the past 10 years. So it's safe to say we know a thing or two about TVs. Hey, I'm Alex from Ratings.com, and we're here to help you navigate through this sea of information and break down the main TV panel types from LED to OLED, highlighting their strengths and weaknesses. Before we get into modern TVs, let's catch up on how we got here. CRT TVs dominated the market for years, right into the 2000s. These were known for their pure colors, deep blacks, and minimal motion blur. But as we know, they were big and heavy, and unfortunately, even had health and environmental risks. In the 2000s, we saw our first flat screens with both Plasma and the first LCD TVs come out, which used CCFL backlights. Plasmas carried over many of CRT's strengths, like their premium picture quality and good contrast. But there are a few reasons they didn't last nearly as long as CRT's. First, they didn't get very bright, and because they had to use glass as their front panels, reflections would get pretty distracting. And what we soon discovered was that plasmas burned in pretty easily and had temporary image retention. This was pretty annoying. You'd change channels, and the logo from your last channel would remain on screen. By the 2010s, Plasmas was on its way out, and the LED era began. More specifically, LCD panels lit by LEDs. While LCD and LED are sometimes used interchangeably, they don't mean the same thing. LCD is the panel, and LED is the backlighting. Originally, LCD TVs used CCFL backlighting, but this had a limited lifetime, required more power, and contained mercury. They were eventually replaced by LED TVs, which were more efficient and thinner. These had a few drawbacks compared to plasmas and CRTs though, like worse motion handling and lower contrast ratios. But LCDs got bigger and lighter, so they became easier to hang on the wall. Plus, they've actually gotten cheaper over the years. Since then, tech has gotten better to the point that we have the best picture quality and performance we've ever seen on TVs. So, for starters, the most basic TV you can get today is LED. By that, we mean standard LCD TVs that don't use any advanced tech that we'll cover later. Most of these LED TVs are entry level and budget friendly, but that also means they don't offer the best performance. It's also important to remember that there are different types of LCD panels out there, IPS and VA. Most TVs use a VA panel, which has a high contrast ratio for deep enough blacks in dark rooms. The trade-off is that they have narrow viewing angles, meaning the image washes out and looks different from the sides. That's where IPS LCD panel types come in with wider viewing angles, but there are few IPS TVs out there. Their downside is that they have a low contrast ratio, so blacks look gray and you lose a lot of detail in dark scenes. There are a few drawbacks to these basic LEDs. Most aren't the brightest. This isn't exactly a technical limitation, but more of a market limitation because they're designed as budget models. Thin LED TVs also break faster, so you might find yourself buying a new one quicker than if you were to get a higher end panel type. And lastly, these TVs tend to have limited colors, and that's where the next panel type, QLED, comes in with more colors. QLED is a marketing term that Samsung first used, and it's not entirely new tech. It uses the same basic structure as an LED TV, an LCD panel with LED lights. The key difference is that these TVs use quantum dots, which convert the light into more precise colors than the simple filters that LCDs use. Out of all the LED and QLED TVs we've tested, our data clearly shows that QLEDs display a wider range of colors in the BT2020 color space that's used in most HDR content. You can see this even when comparing SPD graphs of an LED and a QLED. It's clear that the QLED has a better defined range of colors. When it needs to display red, it displays red and not orange. It's important to remember that not all QLEDs are the same. Some use cheaper KSF phosphors to produce better defined red compared to non-QLEDs, but there are some downsides to this. They have slower decay times, which isn't noticeable in our testing though. That said, because many of these KSF TVs are lower end, they tend to have worse motion handling. This isn't because of the KSF phosphor, but it's more of a market limitation. Outside of better colors, QLEDs don't really offer major upgrades over standard LEDs. If they use a VA panel, they tend to have the same high contrast and narrow viewing angles. However, they still aren't the brightest TVs on the market. That title goes to Mini LED. Like how QLED improved on LED, Mini LED takes it a step further. 
but the two aren't mutually exclusive. In fact, most mini LED TVs are actually QLEDs. While QLED means the TV uses quantum dot filters, mini LED means that it uses many LED backlights placed directly behind the panel. This allows these TVs to get much brighter, which makes sense because more light is more bright. In fact, the brightest TVs we've tested are all mini LEDs, with some reaching over three to 4,000 nits with small highlights in HDR. Now that's just crazy. There are two advantages to this. They fight glare in well-lit rooms, and they make highlights pop in HDR for a vivid experience. So if you have a sunny room and you want the brightest TV possible, you should go for a mini LED. There are other advantages to these TVs. When they use their local dimming features, the smaller lights allow for finer control of dimming around bright objects. This means they can display deeper blacks with less haloing than other LED TVs, especially basic ones that use edge lit backlighting. High-end mini LEDs with good local dimming usually have premium picture quality because of this, but not all mini LED TVs are the same. Many entry-level models usually have more haloing around bright objects because they have fewer dimming zones. If that's a deal breaker, there's another type of TV that displays deep and inky blacks without any of this haloing. You guessed it, OLED. So, while the TV types we've talked about so far all use LED backlights with LCD panels, there's another type that's completely different, and that's OLED, which entered the consumer market in 2013. They don't have backlights and instead use self-emissive pixels, meaning each pixel produces their own light and can turn on and off as needed. The main benefit of getting an OLED is for watching content in dark rooms. This is where they deliver those deep, inky blacks without any haloing that even the best mini LED TVs can't match. OLEDs also have near instant response times, giving sharper motion than any LED TV. There are different types of OLED panels. There's WOLED, which is made by LG and is the traditional OLED panel on TVs. It uses a white OLED layer with color filters to produce red, green, and blue. The problem with this is that it doesn't display a very wide range of colors. Samsung came up with their own OLED panel to solve this issue. It relies on a blue light with quantum dot layers. This allows for better purity for a more lifelike image in HDR. LG did recently fight back with their own improvement in the form of the first RGB tandem OLED panel on the LG G5. It improves in color purity compared to WOLEDs, but is still just behind QD OLEDs. Regardless, the battle is a lot closer now. Brightness has historically been OLED's weak spot, especially when compared to mini LEDs. That said, OLEDs have been getting brighter the last few years, especially since the first MLA TVs in 2023. And now, the LG G5 hits nearly 800 nits in real content in SCR and peaks at over 2,000 nits with small highlights in HDR. These are fascinating numbers we never thought we'd actually see from OLEDs a few years ago. Of course, the brightest OLEDs are also flagship models, and lower-end models are usually dimmer. Regardless, most OLEDs still make highlights pop in HDR because of their near-infinite contrast ratio. There's one thing to keep in mind if you do plan on getting an OLED for a bright room, though. QD OLEDs lack polarizers, so in bright rooms, the black levels rise a lot. This gives them a purple tint when there's ambient light facing the screen, so you really need to use a QD OLED in a dark room to get the best picture quality. W OLEDs don't have this issue. Even though the black levels go up a bit in a bright room, it's barely noticeable. The last and biggest downside of OLEDs is that they risk permanent burn-in over time. This can happen if you always have the same thing on a TV all the time, like if you leave CNN all day like we do with our burn-in test. The organic materials in the panel degrade like this, but this is a really extreme example. However, if you change up what you watch and run the TV's pixel refresh feature, the burn-in risk reduces significantly. And this isn't to say that LED TVs are immune to damage over time either. We also saw backlight failures on LED TVs in our longevity test. Regardless of the TV you get, you're going to eventually replace it. Whether that's in 5, 10, or 20 years really depends on how much you use it. Remember, panel type isn't everything. There are plenty of things we didn't talk about that aren't impacted by the panel, like the size, processing, color accuracy, and features. Even cost is something that varies as there are entry level to high end models with each type. Of course, OLEDs are expensive, so if you don't have the budget for one, 
mini LEDs are a strong alternative. But if these are still too much out of your price range, there are plenty of LED TVs that do the trick. It's like a ladder. Take a step down if you can't get the best of the best. Plus, there's some more tech coming out to challenge what we currently have. This includes RGB Mini LED, which is an LED TV that's meant to improve colors even further. There's also Micro LED, which provides the benefits of OLED without the risk of burn-in, but it's still in its early days and only available as very large displays. So, that's all for our breakdown of the main TV types you can get these days. Which one are you going to get? Or which one do you have? If you want more info, we have a ton of articles you can read on our website. The links are in the description below. Until next time, I'm Alex from Ratings.com, where we help you find the best TV for your needs. Bye. There are a few drawbacks to most basic ooh, to these basic LEDs. Okay. <clears throat> there are a few drawbacks to these LEDs. Oh my goodness, basic. <laughs> All right.